Hmm. Uh, God revealed to you uh, your ministry, your purpose mm -hmm. as a person. And mm -hmm. you, you, you mentioned that your purpose was now, your ministry was women. Mm -hmm. To us, mm -hmm. it is bad yes. things that are happening in your marriage. And yeah. to you, it mm -hmm. is for a purpose. I was taken, driven away to, I don't know where, because now not is so much in those quarreling sessions that unless he let it out, it would choke him. Because mm. I went to that bathroom. Thank God it was clean. I sat down on the floor mm. and I started to cry. I'm telling Jesus, this cross is too heavy. How long for? I told her, all that mom, I, I have no plans of leaving this marriage. Because mm. if I leave this marriage, I will have left my Jesus. Mm. And if I leave Jesus behind, I have no life. That's when I realized that I was married to a narcissist. Nicole, this is a bad spirit. Some people don't even know they have it. Mm. They're very controlling, and it is so sad when it's on a woman. Mm. They started to see an even hotter temper than ever seen. Okay, welcome back once again, guys. Thank you for joining us for yet another part of Michelle's testimony. Now, uh, we are still at Crest Homes in Kitende. For those of you that are interested in knowing about our beautiful background, we are at the Crest Homes in Kitende, and these are furnished apartments. So, but I'll let, I'll give Michelle an opportunity at the end of this video to tell us more about these apartments. But for now, uh, Michelle, I would love for us to continue with where we had stopped. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, <coughs> you were telling us we had left the hospital now mm -hmm. and we were headed back home and uh now you had gathered your energy you you felt like you're strong enough to go back to church and on your way to church you said i think i remember you mentioned that that is when mm. uh god revealed to you uh your ministry your purpose mm -hmm. As a person, and mm -hmm. you, you you mentioned that your purpose was now your ministry was women. Mm -hmm. God made that clear to you on your way to church. So tell us more about that. Yeah, women and children. Mm. Um, I came to a full understanding that mm. um, everything that I had been going through mm. was um, to help other women. Okay, because again, it's very easy for for a person to get so frustrated because of um, everything I envisaged about marriage. Mm. I had not gotten an experience yeah. of it. Mm. And um, I thank God for his mm. word. I give glory to the Lord because um, he guided me mm. into why all of this stuff was happening. Okay. It gave me a calm to know that everything was for a good cause. Mm. And now I purposed within me to seek the Lord more, to seek the Lord more so that I can bath mm. that which he needed me to do. So, yeah. So would you say that um, everything, in this case, let me call it bad, mm -hmm. because to us, mm. it is bad yes. things that are happening in your marriage and yeah. to you, it mm. is for a purpose. So meaning mm. everything that happened, was was actually for a purpose it had to happen mm -hmm. to put you into yeah. this place yeah. that uh, god wants you to be yeah and and i'm glad you're mentioning that because mm. i feel like i should have mentioned from the get-go mm. um remember i told you before that i was attending another church yeah before marriage yeah after the lord says to me i need you in another church mm. it was vivid like i need you to serve in kansanga mm -hmm. and as um i I was following instructions when I went to a new church. Yeah. And also this became a problem in the marriage because okay. the, 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 my husband needed me to go to the church that he was attending. Mm. And I was so clear on like, you know, I can't, I need to follow an instruction. Because I want to, uh, I'm mm. sure he's not wrong for that because once mm. you get married, you're, you're supposed, supposed to, to go to the same church. Yeah, but again, mm. at this point, mm. God has sent you to this church. Exactly. It was very, very clear. I need you mm. in Kansanga. I need, and I had the instruction, the scripture for it and everything. Okay. Okay. And I also got confirmation 
um, from the pastor that he sent me to submit to, mm. to, to submit to, because mm. he called me and said, "Listen, Michelle, this is what I am getting from the Lord." And yeah. I said to him, "Listen, I got that." weeks as well months yeah. back or weeks back yeah but i needed him to speak with you because i can't just jump into a new church and go flying to the people and saying to them oh i need to serve mm. so for me to have two confirmations from where i'm headed to and myself where i knew exactly where i needed to be and by now everything that i had been through was so painful for me to think of wasting another minute mm. so i tried to explain to my husband at the time that listen this is what i need to do and even him he was so like you know like already he's into that space of what i tell you you have to do yeah so there's a bit of pulling the rope but i'm so thankful to god that i stuck to where he asked me to go to mm -hmm. because everything that had been happening if i had stayed in the previous church the previous church was a deliverance church yeah it was centered more about you know let's slay the devil mm. the new church was a faith based church mm. the space that i was in i needed encouragement okay. positive words to yeah. speak me into the future that i need okay so if i had stayed this this side i would have been slaying all manner of demons because of all the things that i'm looking at and in the meantime i'm delaying so it was very very important for the instruction mm. upon my life for me mm. to be on this side there's something that you have mentioned about the church where he wanted you to go, where he was going. It yeah. was more of a deliverance church. Yeah. Now, I'm still stuck mm -hmm. on, on what you said about all these bad things happening to you being mm -hmm. of purpose. Yeah. They have to happen to you mm -hmm. in order for you to go into the next Mm -hmm. dimension into the next step of your life yeah now of course us christians have um uh you know we like to wage mm -hmm. you know war against mm -hmm. the enemy to go mm -hmm. into spiritual warfare and mm -hmm. you know fight mm -hmm. again you know come against whatever it is that the devil is trying to throw at us mm -hmm. because we believe every bad thing mm -hmm. comes from the devil yeah you know but what you're explaining to us you're showing us that god meant for these bad things mm -hmm. to happen mm -hmm. so that uh, you get into the next phase of your life yeah so i just want a christian who's watching this to know when is the right when do i have to wage war against the enemy and when do i not have to, to sit and enjoy the movie yeah <laughs> <laughs> because first we need to understand that it's actually okay for these bad things to happen mm. sometimes god lets them happen mm -hmm. for us to learn something mm -hmm. or for them to uh, grow us correct yeah mm. and then we also need to understand that we need to understand when to fight and when not to, you know, cancel fires and all these things. So okay, um, first of all, it's, 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 it's very important as a born again mm. to hear from God. Right. Everybody has a specific journey to walk. And um, unfortunately, um, it doesn't happen in the general congregation. Mm -hmm. The Bible says never forsake gathering. Because you need that to fellowship together, to grow together, to be under the voice of the pastor that you're under at that point in time. Mm. But then also it's very, very key to be in a space of alone time. Okay. I remember saying to you, before I got married, I was very much into alone time, the yeah. Bible. Yeah. So it helped me to hear from God. And um, even though I always have a pastor above me that's, that that's, I'm submitting under, I also have a primary voice via his word. Mm. So before he sent me to Kantanga, he gave me a scripture, Jeremiah chapter 1, um, from verse 5 onwards. You know, the one that says, Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I mm. knew you. Mm. I, um, before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to, um, to the nations and all the way down. So it, I, I got to that understanding of, listen, Michelle, wherever I'm sending you to, this is what you were born for. Okay. It's very, very key that you get, you get there so we can start on the reason as to why okay. you came onto planet um, thingy, planet Earth. Mm. And then the other key thing to note is you, you asked a very vital question that has born against when do we know to wage warfare and mm, to just winter, chill? Yeah. That is very, very key. Like I said, it comes from hearing from God. Because Michelle, um, healing is accepting that it is of God. It is of God. Yeah. You rest in the Lord. Yeah. You know, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High mm. shall abide, mm. shall mm. rest. Mm. 
under the shadow of the Almighty. Mm. So unless you dwell in the secret place, in the yeah. word of God all the time, it is hard for you to hear from him directly, to know your business. Because he doesn't say these things in the general whatever. Mm. If you look at all the guys who were sent in the Bible, they were met when they were by themselves. Mm. Moses was alone, you know. Hannah was alone. Yeah. You have to be alone to hear from him. Mm. So when you know for a fact where you're supposed to be, everything that happens, what's important is, did you hear the instruction? Are you positioning is very, very key. Are you where you're supposed to be? Because mm. for the instruction to work, it has to be for a specific location. Okay. And for the instruction to work, there's got to be people that have been longer in the experience to pour into you so that they can nurture the instruction. Mm -hmm. And that's what um, the, 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 the pastor where I'm at at the moment has done majorly for me. He has nurtured me into who I'm supposed to be. Okay. So I give God the glory for that. But I also want to give the example of Moses in the Bible. Mm. Now let's use um, Joseph. Yeah. Um, let's do Psalm 105, mm -hmm. verse 17. It says, God sent a man before them. Joseph, mm. who was sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in irons until the time that his word came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. Right. So when you look at little Joseph at a very young age, the Lord speaks to him. Mm. Look, you're going to be this sort of person. But the minute the word comes to Joseph and he shares it with the people, persecution begins. Right. So he's... Um, Siblings yes. hate on him. Sold him. They sold him to wherever. Mm -hmm. And then um, he ends up in um, jail because of refusing to do wrong, to sleep yeah. with Potiphar's wife. And then in jail, the guys that are supposed to help him out forget all about him mm -hmm. for years. So it's very easy for someone who is like in a position that Joseph is in to assume that, oh my God, this is ancestral spirits. Right. I am cast A, B, C, D up to Z. Yeah. Or it's easy for someone who's in a position like Moses's. How is it that I was born, you know, I, I got into the state house at the month of three yeah. and now I'm having to go up country to look after cows at, and I'm living with my father-in-law and I only have sleepers, yet I used to ride mm. horses. Uh, I'm operating under a car. Mm. So instruction is very, very key. When a person knows where they're supposed to be and why, you stop, to, you stop to go with the crowd. Yeah. You know when to apply warfare. And you also know, you see, like I said, I also had a bit of like, did I hear right? Yeah. That's why I gave you the, the, the example of, um, I had several incidents where I would go to men of God. And before they even tell me anything, the first thing they make me understand is, Michelle, that is your husband. Mm. So whatever you're thinking, you can't run away. That is where you're supposed to be, instruction number one. Okay. So everything that follows, it's always important to know mm -hmm. the instruction. Mm -hmm. So everything that I went through in my marriage, <clears throat> I had to sit down and put the instruction first. How do I put the instruction first? I continuously dwell in the secret place. So and the secret right. place didn't disappoint. That's what I, made it easier for you to oh yeah. walk through this. Oh yeah. And how do you know that the Lord is with you? Mm. How do you know when you're going through a tough stage mm. in your life or whatever you're going through, but for some reason, there's always a cushion. There's provision. There's where the Lord has sent you to. Mm. It's, it's tough, but you do not drown like the scripture in Isaiah. I called you my name. When you pass through the fire, it will not burn you. When mm. you pass uh, the, through the water, you shall not drown. I'll uphold you with my righteous right hand. All of these scriptures he gave to me. Okay. So I knew to stay put. And the things I learned along the way through sitting down and, and to hear from him all the time, mm. they always gave me a peace. Like I took you through how I learned how to sit through an argument without contributing. Yeah. Yeah. I, learned how, I learned how to humble myself. So this, when, when this vision comes, when I'm in hospital after a miscarriage, it was all clear to me like, oh, mm. wow. Okay. Mm. Okay. Now let's do you. So that's now, I, that's when I intensify mm. on the church attending, okay. church everything. And then the Lord in all of his grace loosens the screws for the fairy furnace because mm. now my husband is returned up country. Oh, so he the, the, he he went back up country. So meaning he would only be home on the weekends. Weekends. So okay. that gave me 
more time and I appreciate it good more mm. and I couldn't wait to hit that secret place because for me at home my secret place is in the bathroom mm. toilet so I'd put my mat and study and study and study then during the week I threw myself into ministry you know mm. every day of the week was appointed to a gig I think Monday was the only lounging day mm. Tuesday I'm at um church with the youth studying mm. the bible Wednesday we were doing wisdom Wednesdays the leadership meeting, all the leadership meetings at church at Fido mm. Dido. Mm. Those ones helped me a lot. It was an intense two years, and I would like to give God the glory for Dr. Kalipala, Pastor Roland, all of mm. those pastors. They really mentored us well. It's, it's you know, and, and I really, uh, Pastor Kasibante, it's easy for these men. I don't know what drove them every morning. They still do to come and teach us. But to some of us, it was everything. Mm. It was the bread. It was the anchor. It was everything that we needed. And everything they taught was spot on. You mm. almost want to go over and ask them, how did you know? I remember um, Pastor Kasivanti released a book and I asked him to sign for me. The words that he signed in this book that he wrote about destiny, because he handles destiny, destiny matters. Mm. Every word was key. Every word was on point. Yeah. Every word that he signed was an anointing on this heart of mine, mm. a reconciliation of what's going on. So to have that all lined up and um, Thursdays, what would we do? Thursdays, I'd spend time alone again with Jesus a whole day. Yeah. I had a spot at um, Serena Chigo where I would sit by the water and just listen out for God, listen out okay. for God. Friday, we would shoot uh, videos. So every day was catered too. Okay. until my husband returns over the weekend. So I learned how to leave mm. with my husband and um, I just look on. Okay, so um, now, of course, I, I understand that now, since you're doing church, like every day of your life, mm. church <coughs> seems to have become like a place of, you know, refuge. Yeah, that's that's exactly the word. Mm. Church became home. Church become became a comfort place. Mm. And then there was the evening service as well. Evening services. Those were so, so helpful. Mm. I remember one specific service in early 2022. Well, I sat there, I think it was a Tuesday. Mm. And pastor was preaching. And then he said, you know, some of you, you, you're supposed to seek the Lord more than you're doing it. Otherwise, you will take forever you know, walking around that mountain like the mm. children of Israel, a journey that would have taken four days is going to take you forever because you're slacking. Instead of seeking the Lord, you're there running up and down. Oh, no, the husband I need to do this. And in all of this, you know for a fact that your husband doesn't love you. And you're spending all of this time wasting time mm. instead of coming to seek the Lord. For me, that was a slap in the face. That was a big wake-up call. It's, it's interesting to not. Why? Because in my opinion, by what you've you, you've told us, I feel yeah. like you were searching God all the time, every uh, day. For me, I felt in my heart, I need to increase enough. the volume. Wow. I need to increase the volume if I want to get out of this fire as soon as possible. So there, I gave my whole mm. to the evening service. And every time my husband would phone me, where are you, church? Mm. Where are you with the youth? Mm. Where are you, church, church, church? And um, I miss those evening services. It used to be just Wednesday and Friday before in mm. 2022. And um, there's something about those services, the evening ones. Like, pastor really gets personal. It's like he's talking to friends. Mm. I, I think the guys that would come in in the evenings were all like intentional church goers, not okay. your ordinary Sunday. I noticed something about it. Mm. On Sunday, he's all suited up and talking almost too professional. Wednesdays is, you know, it's like it's, it's like conversations flowing. You almost feel like you know him on a level, right? Mm. So I got so addicted to those. But then sometimes they would extend to around maybe 9 or maybe 9.30. Mm -hmm. So my husband began to get a bit uncomfortable mm. because remember now I don't react. Yeah. I'm super quiet, mm. listening, learning, listening, learning. And he's and, finding this habit a bit weird because yeah. before you would... Fight you'd back. react, mm. you would talk, you mm. know, and now. And um, what's at church, Michelle? Mm. Why are you always at church? Mm -hmm. And I had this thing of putting the phone on silent or often I'm going to church. So they start, they started to be some question marks. What is it at church? Are you sure you're at church? I had a lot of cases to answer for okay. <laughs> in, in my going to church. Um, 
episodes. Mm. What stood out the most is we must have had an altercation at home, a misunderstanding about a help again that was being asked to leave unceremoniously. Mm. And then he um when he came back over the weekend, obviously on Saturday I was at church once again. Mm. <laughs> I don't know what was at church. So, <laughs> oh man, you know like how some men can be in the bar mm. until 2 a.m., yeah. 3 a.m. And then you say, oh, that guy is an al alcoholic. Mm -hmm. The big guy never wants to go. Yo, sometimes at home there's fire. Mm. You know the scripture that says that I'm better to dwell in the rooftop than that to be in a house with a contentious wife. Mm. There was contentions, so I had to look for peace. Mm. I mastered the art of waking up in my mind before I opened my eyes. Because mm. if I open my, my eyes straight away, I don't know what case is waiting for me. Mm. So I would first, before opening the eyes, I think, where am I? Home. Okay. Today is Tuesday. Mm. Right. At the earliest opportunity, I have to step out. Because I never enjoyed um, staying home and lounging in the living room because you just never knew when you do wrong. Yeah. When the, you know, floods would come in. So I'd just, I'd just step out. Mm. The house failed to become a home. I'm a person that loves plants. Mm. The plants began to dry up, which I find so interesting because I would water them, but I, I think they felt like there was no love for me. Yeah. So... We're well, picking up it on the energy. Yeah, the energy in the house. <laughs> so... Church became church. So anyway, this let's first leave it at church. I mm. want to ask you something. Mm. Now, um, I remember you had mentioned that you were working. Mm -hmm. So I believe at this point you're still working. Oh no! I, because uh, I'm trying to understand how I'm when going to does church a every person day. work yeah. when they go to church like every day. Yeah, mm. I'm, I'm, we're going to talk about that. Um, mm. The work how work comes to an end. But first, let me tell you about this counseling session that stood out. Eh? Okay. We'll come back to that. Mm. So I'm at church on a Saturday, mm -hmm. and uh, my husband calls me. Where are you? At church. Mm. That C word again. Okay. Come. I need to go somewhere with you. Okay. And this is your church in the evening services? No, this was 11 a.m. in the oh, morning. Okay. It was a Saturday. Okay. So I went back home. And uh, I was taken, driven away to I don't know where. Because now I stopped reasoning. Yeah. I was humble to be. I was. You're just following. I was okay to obeying. be a sheep. Yeah. Mm. Let's go. Keep quiet all the way, and wondering what now, because there had been a, an episode at home. Mm. So we end up at a church, two hours drive to there, mm. and. Uh, I didn't even know it was a church because I'd never been there. I just knew, okay, we're going for counseling. Fine. So we're waiting. And then um, an usher comes and takes us, sits us somewhere to wait for the counselor. I don't know who. Yeah. What? By God's grace, I'm such a sheep. Just Looking going, back now, I just you. know, <laughs> yeah, it is the Lord. Like how you just follow. Mm. It was the grace of the Lord. Okay. And so we sit there. This pastor works in, I've known her a long time. Mm. She's actually a friend. But we haven't spoken for the longest. And when I saw her, my heart sank. I'm like, oh no, she knows too. Because now, knowing my husband, mm. to get that appointment, she, he must have given her a very, very good history and a reason why. Yeah. And now I was thinking, oh Michelle, how far can your reputation go into the gutters, even mm. this one? Because now this was like the fifth person to counsel us. And I know our counseling sessions. All of my phones have to be mentioned from the day he set eyes on me. How I took a phone call from a, a, a guy that guards the gate of a supermarket. How I am everything I've ever done. Mm. It doesn't matter how the previous counseling session went and what was supposedly solved. No, we would have to go back no, from back. scratch. Oh, wow. And by now I had mastered, I would understood mm how to expect it because I learned that it was probably a technique or it was something that he had to do mm. to remove it from his chest because mm. it was weighing heavily on him. Okay. So I noticed so much in those quarreling sessions that unless he let it out, 
it would choke him. Because mm. I remember in some of the episodes, he would, be, he would be like, I need to talk to you. Hurry up. I need to talk to you. Because if I don't talk to you, I will not relax. I need to get it off my chest. So it, it was almost like as if it's bubbling inside of him and it has to come out. Okay. So anyway, we sat there and everything came pouring out from 2.30 to 5 p.m. From 2.30 to 5 p.m. Yeah. And he's still giving a review. Oh, God. And this one, what was hurtful about this one? Remember I told you that his daughter had come to live with yes. us? Yes, yeah. And one of his issues were, I'd learned to ignore everything, but this one hurt me the most. Mm. He said, um, th this, you know, lady over here, she does not like my daughter. She and the help, they, they mistreat my child. And, and I thought, and, and I said, and I, thought, and I thought, really, Jesus, you're my witness. Mm. I loved this girl before I even met her. Yeah. So if I was nice to her before I met her, how is it that I'm mistreating her in this house? So he went ahead and gave his reasons, gave his reasons. And I thought to myself, Jesus, for once, can I speak up? Mm. Can I say, and I remember hinting that, look, pastor, that's not true. Actually, I've even done this before. But I noticed after talking that it didn't help. Mm. So again, I felt like the Holy Spirit was slapping me in the face of Michelle. Be Not quiet. Time. Let your words be few. Mm. There's a time to be silent and a time to speak. But boy, the time to be silent was too long. Very anyway, nice. he went ahead and said many things. Now, there's, there's a nerve he touched. I don't remember what. So I got bored. Mm. I was about to explode into tears. Mm. And then I said to the Holy Spirit, Not now. Not now, not now. So I excused myself and I said to them, can I use the bathroom? They told me, fine. I went to that bathroom. Thank God it was clean. I sat down on the floor mm. and I started to cry. I'm telling Jesus, this cross is too heavy. How long for? Mm. How long for? This time I wasn't even asking for an angel to come. Last time he gave me angels, a mom and a dad. Mm. Yeah, but this time I was thinking, how long for? So... And then I had a voice right there in that tiny bathroom say to me, but Michelle, did Jesus ever run away from the cross? I stood up. I washed my face, organized my heart the mm. best way I could, and you I walked back. back. When I went back and sat, mm -hmm. he started exactly where he stopped. So he was not done yet. No. <laughs> so I went back into student mode. Oh, wow. I will listen. Mm. He spoke and spoke and spoke and spoke. And all this time you haven't shared, I think. No. When he was done, I think I just needed to get used to it. And mm. I finally did anyway. When he was done talking, the pastor turns to me and she says, You know, Michelle, I'm thinking, what? For once they're not going to ask him my opinion. Okay. Not that I was going to give it. The pastor starts to say, You know, Michelle, there's a lady one time who came here and she was thinking of leaving her husband because of toothpaste, she do you what? I don't know what. I told her, all that mom, I, I have no plans of leaving this marriage. Because mm. if I leave this marriage, I will have left my Jesus. Mm. And if I leave Jesus behind, I have no life. So I just, I, I need us to be aligned on that one. Mm. Eh? I am not walking away. Okay. And then I'm thinking, find another what? Take, cancel me on something else. And by your Jesus, you, you, you mean... Like you, you meant that you're not leaving him because he is the one who instructed you. Yeah, listen, the Lord sent me into this marriage. In the first place. So if I leave this marriage, it's like disobedience, I've so. dropped the instruction. Mm. What will I do afterward? Remember, now my life has become ministry. I have made so many friends in ministry. The youth that I minister to are personal friends and children to me as well. Mm. So if I leave, when I go back to the secret place, what do we have to talk about? Because again, in the secret place, he was always giving me instructions of now here, here's what you do. This, this is how you do what you need to do. Okay. So we, we, and then I told her, listen, I have nothing to add on to that. But just so you know, you're the fifth person to counsel us. So, you know, like, I, it's like now I wanted to comfort her. Like, don't be frustrated. This mm -hmm. is our nature. Wow. You get. <laughs> so, um, so when we stood up to leave, mm -hmm. the gentleman excused himself to go to the bathroom. And then this pastor turned to me and said, oh, but Michelle, you know these men, especially, you know, you know, you just let, you know, she made a statement as if to say, I know, Michelle, that you're not in the wrong, mm. but chill. My heart broke. My heart broke at the time. I had a, 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 a like a mini disappointment. Why? 
I think because I'd entered into the feet of a woman, eh? yeah. I thought to myself, hang on a minute. What if I am that girl that came thinking that you can help? Mm. And now I'm being I've sent back, know. even though I've gotten all the accusation. Yeah. Like, who is the advocate mm. for this woman mm. who has no, who, who doesn't have an understanding of why she's going through what she's going through? Right. It also came to my understanding that um, counseling is not a manual. That if you're going through this, this is the answer. Because this is the fifth person. And I'm starting to notice traits about my husband. And it's occurring to me that nobody knows the nature and character of a person or, or that spirit that's behind my husband. So clearly nobody can understand me. So no counselor no counselor so, will ever be able to help me. So mm, it was frustrating like that. At this point, you mentioned that your friend that you had met around the time when they locked you out the room had already told you about this nature of, of, of this yeah, person. Yeah. I they already introduced you to. Yeah. Now you know the kind of person that it's, you're dealing with. It's starting to open up. Okay. Because I remember and, as mm. we were driving from this counseling session, it's night time, 8 mm. p.m., mm. traffic. Mm. And I am, you know, sat there in the car and looking at people walking past. Mm. And I have tears streaming down my eyes of, oh, my God, this will never end. So now we have to go back home and I have to go back into humble mode. And there'll, there'll never be reconciliation. I am forever going to be like this. I was crying and crying. Meanwhile, for him, he's talking words like so now you see you see like for him it feels like things have been fixed because he has poured out it's, his his, his thank issues. you he always has to be understood you get he doesn't it. care if you understood or if you say take something. the back seat so i sat there and 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 then in the middle of feeling sorry for myself and crying he mm. does not see that i'm crying okay because Cry strategically mm. <laughs> and and um I hear a voice, like a whisper from this side, like, Michelle, what have you learned? When that question popped in, mm. the answers began flooding in my mind and a peace, I can't even feel it now, a mm. peace mm. began to fill me up. Number one, Jesus, you are all that I have. Only you will ever understand me. Nobody mm. will never be able to understand the shoes Mm. They'll never be able to walk a mile in my shoes. Mm. Only you can understand. Because even this pastor that I've been regarding so highly spiritually, listen to what has come out of her. Yeah. Only you, Jesus. Mm. Okay, yes, Michelle. What else? This person is never going to change. This is the fifth counselor. I'm not going back to counseling. Good. Mm -hmm. What else, Michelle? Like there was a lot of lessons. Mm. Uh -huh. I'll always keep quiet. No matter what I say back. I can't win. What else have you learned? Father, what do you do for women in a unique situation? That's where I learned this concept that I always tell um, the youth that I mentor that, look, the purpose upon your life is as unique as your thumbprint. Mm. Don't look to Michelle. I'm only here to point you to the way, just to give you a few pointers. pointers yeah. But you need to graduate further, to go into the word and mm -hmm. find out who you are because there's no copy and paste. Yeah. All of us were formed differently. Um, there's a scripture I like in Psalm 136. I'll read it in case it helps somebody. Psalm 139, mm. verse 16, it says, David was talking to God and he's saying, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. Hmm? And in your book, they were all written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there was none of them. Mm. So I got into that space of this is my, this is what the Lord's eyes saw okay. before I was formed in my mother's womb. Mm. And all these things that I'm going through, they were written in my manual before I even came here down on earth. Okay. Because again, that's the statement my mom used to use all the time. Every time I'd call her and I'm so super upset, I can't reconcile what's going on, she would say to me, Michelle, just say, Lord, I thank you. Because you know this day. You must have known this day before I was born. Mm. I thank you. Because you know this day of my life. So I learned to self-cancel. Okay. And I don't want to say self-cancel. The Lord mm, canceled. canceled me. Because mm. no one could handle our case. Right. So I went back into seeking God mode. Now, um, you were mentioning earlier about how he, one of his issues that mm. he was reporting to the pastor mm. during the counseling mm. was that he felt like you hate his mm. son, his mm. daughter. Mm. So I, I wanted to ask you about 
his relationship with your son because you haven't really mm -hmm. touched that mm -hmm. how was it because now we've seen his sons and mm -hmm. his son and daughter in the picture but how mm -hmm. w w you've talked about your relationship with his children yeah how was his relationship with your son very good mm. absolutely good mm. they got along fine he would um ev by the way every time he came home and the rest of us were scattering off all is my son mm. he called my son mm. and they stayed together okay yeah he was very good with my son good. took very good care of my son so i thank god for that mm. the cross was mine alone mm. yeah Mm. All right, so let's proceed from your in the car. God has spoken to yeah. you, counseled you. What have you learned? What next? So, when I go deeper into Christ, mm. as at church one day, mm. when the pastor was teaching about the relationship between Saul and David, okay, I'd never looked it at in in that. I'd never looked at it in the angle of um. David went into the palace for training. Mm. When David is called into the palace, it's like a testimony. Yay, mm. I'm not in the bushes anymore. I live in the state house. Yeah. But then <clears throat> when he gets there, one minute he's the sweetheart. Next minute, Saul doesn't even remember who David is. Mm. That teachings, 2022 is very significant for me because that's when I got a full understanding of who exactly my husband is. Mm. The, the, the trainer that the Lord had put in place for me. Yeah. Because... Um, David starts to get to go through all manner of um, pressure and stress. Mm. And, and it turns out um, David is a man after God's own heart. He yeah. hasn't done anything wrong. Saul is just in place to mm -hmm. polish David mm -hmm. until he's good enough for the throne. Mm -hmm. But everything that was being taught was pointing back at my house. Okay. In the same week, I listened to a teaching by um, Kevin L. Ewing. Mm. He's a teacher of the word on, on, uh, on, on YouTube. Mm. He's from the Caribbean. It just, I don't even know how I found that teaching, but it just bust my head open. Mm -hmm. I could literally see my brain now. Mm. That's that when I realized that I was married to a narcissist. Wow. Kevin released this teaching about narcissism. I had heard the word before. Yeah. I'd never paid close attention. Yeah. And I, I also got lost into that, Michelle, whatever you're learning, sit and learn. Mm. But this man came in and gave a description of a girl that he dated before and all of the traits that the girl had, you could think they were born in, on the same day, same minute, same time <laughs> with my husband. Yeah. So it was such relief for me that finally... Finally, someone knows what I'm going through. Mm. Finally, somebody understands. And the advice he was giving, he was because he was uh, he was describing that the narcissist spirit, yeah. what these people exhibit. Mm. One, they're very manipulative. Mm -hmm. Even when something is wrong and it's their fault, they find a way to twist it. Mm. They like mirroring. They talk down on you. Yeah. They 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 never listen. So everything that Kevin taught in that teaching yeah. was my name plus plus. I was wow. so excited. Mm. I was so excited. I remember sending the teaching to my mom, even though her English is not that much. I said, I try, please. I need you to understand that I'm not running mad. That guy knows mm. that guy is not in Uganda. He's all the way in the Caribbean and he knows what's every tiny detail mm. that's going on in my house. So I was encouraged. And then I started to learn. And at that time, because there's a way I read the Bible. Mm. Sometimes I read it as a novel. So, you know, page by page just to know what happens next. Then sometimes I go into intense study mm, and then sometimes I'm looking for the nature of God. Yeah. So in my novel reading session at that time, I was in the book of Isaiah. Okay. And I'm reading Isaiah and thinking, oh, what is Prophet Isaiah saying? First of all, it has very many chapters. When will one move on to stories? Because stories are fun. Mm. This is prophets. What now? What is he saying? I remember that Sunday I was seated on the bed. I came across Isaiah 10 and bam, there. It was a proper description of what I was going through. And I was like, you're joking. I started to highlight. I'll read it for you very briefly. Mm -hmm. But for me, that was my total deliverance. Okay. It was my total deliverance. The, the scripture in Isaiah or the video, the teaching of both. Yeah. Remember, I have the steps of um, the lessons I'm getting in the evening services at church. Okay. Then the teaching by Kevin. Now this Isaiah was finally me having my own interpretation, mm. my own revelation. Because mm. no one had ever taught, this, uh, taught me this. And remember, I'm new to the whole time of narcissism, right? Okay. So I'm here reading um, chapter 10. It's um, verses um, 5 mm -hmm. 
and a few onwards. And he's saying, Woe to Assyria, the rod of my anger, and the staff in whose hand is my indignation. I will send him against an ungodly nation mm -hmm. and against the people of my wrath. I'll give him charge to seize the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire in the streets. Yet he does not mean so, nor does his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and to cut off but a few nations. So I thought, hold on a second. Mm. Who are Assyrians? So I went back to the Bible to understand who Assyria is. When I went back from Genesis, I started to look at the Bible in terms of the guys that didn't have the nature and character of God, mm. Nimrod, all the way down, all the children of um, Ham. You know, Noah had three sons. There's mm. Japheth and Shem, and then there's Ham. And Ham had the nature and character of God, and that's where Abraham and everyone that's mm. in the lineage of Christ comes. Mm. So when I look at Ham and everyone that comes under him, these are the Nimrod guys, that the, they rebelled, they built the Tower of Babel, all the way, trickle down the Bible, Nebuchadnezzar, Assyrians, Egyptians. So the Bible now was revealed to me in a different, different angle way, of yeah. these nice people, and these people that have that spirit. Yeah. The ones that have the spirit of God operate in humility and mm -hmm. the Lord blesses them. Abraham, obedience and everything. Then these ones, they're just hardworking, but they're also very aggressive. They're hunters. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that the Lord uses when the Israelites disobey. Mm -hmm. Is the, They're the ones the Lord uses to put us back into place to remove ungodly nations from us. Okay. So the Holy Spirit is asking me, so Michelle, what were your ungodly nations? I have a whole list. But all of it falls under pride. Mm. I need to listen more, mm. I need to obey more. And that's exactly what this gentleman has been teaching me yeah. the hard way. So that's when my mind went into that state of, oh my, mm. isn't it the trainer? Now it helped me to start praying for him. Because mm. it's very easy to go into unforgiveness when you're yeah. facing this sort that's of thing. Right. When right. I got the understanding of what's going on, mm. what the Lord needs from me, mm. I began to pray for him. But not, not openly, because remember, we're not in a relationship. Yeah, yeah. So you have to do it on a low low. Yeah. And then he's also intense of, Michelle, don't speak, always keep quiet. Are you still praying together at this point, like you mm -hmm. used to? No. Okay. At some point I had to stop because the mm -hmm. accusations went all the way to the knees. Okay. okay. So remember, I'm not talking back. Yeah. And he's now, when I started to keep quiet, he was on an agenda to know what's going on in my head. Mm. So... Even when we would go on our knees, because I'm not feeding. Nicole, this is a bad spirit. Some people don't even know they have it. Mm. They're very controlling, and it is so sad when it's on a woman, because mm. it takes away your your lady, mm. you being a lady. Because you, you totally can't submit because you think you're right in everything. Yeah. You think everyone else, you're above everybody else. So it takes... It takes away your beauty generally. Yeah. So um, would go. he would wake me up at midnight to pray, and... um. I kneel down. Yeah. I listen in. When I see that the prayers are going into accusatory Different thingy, and, and he was so passionate about slaying demons as well, I think to myself, my spirit is not in agreement with that. So I keep quiet until it's done. You say amen. But in my spirit, I'm saying to God, I'm not in agreement with these prayers. Mm. Let me tell you, for a couple to pray together, they have to be in agreement. Mm, you have to be in one accord. The Bible says before you come here on my knees to ask me I for anything, go and agree with your neighbor, mm, whatever mm. you disagreed upon. Then you come to me. Otherwise, you're giving a sacrifice of fools. Yeah. So I learned a lot from an earlier stage that nothing is going to happen between this person and I mm. until we agree. Mm. So after I got boldness to tell him, I'm not going to pray with you. I can't pray with you. I became and how strong. Did you take that? Of course not well, but mm. with time he just carried on because he loved to pray. Okay. He loved to pray a lot. Okay. So it comes to a point at end of 2022 where he, um, it became so bad. Why? After I learned the spirit that's operating behind him, I need us to differentiate the two. There's the person mm -hmm. and the spirit behind them. Right. It's just that the spirit that's behind you exhibits your person. Okay. You understand? Mm. So when I identified the spirit behind him, I started to see an even hotter temper than I've ever seen. Now, before we get into the hot temper, mm -hmm. you had promised to tell us about the work because you had mentioned that oh, you had briefly work. stopped to work. So, because now we need to first I, understand how you 
how the both of you managed that part, that phase of your life of you mm. not working. Because mm. you had mentioned that when you were working, you were mm. still footing, you mm. know, most of the bills. So now mm. we need to understand where we how, are, at. where where are you now financially, mm -hmm. and you know, providing for mm -hmm. the house and everything. Mm -hmm. mm. So anyway, I'm doing this job, mm -hmm. and um, I'd been doing this job since 2018, mm -hmm. right? And the lockdown came in and affected business because we're doing what? Short-term rentals, Airbnb. There's no flights between countries and our work depends on people flying into the country. Mm -hmm. And But my boss, God bless him so much, Cliff, he was very, very accommodative and he paid me for the entire lockdown. Wow. And, and also sense. that job. Remember I said to you, I asked God, give me a job that will not take me away from your presence. Mm. And he delivered. So I get this job. Cleve and I have never even met. Jason, I did meet because he came to Uganda to, you know, to do a field trip. But um, Cliff, I never met. There's the three of us in this company. And all we ever did was meet on Skype, on the phone, mm. every certain day of the week. But he was so nice. He kept on paying me and even the salary grew because when I started to do um, family altars with different families, somehow the Lord provided um, free internet, home internet, because of meetings that I held at yeah. work and then they facilitated ministry as well. But what I want to pull out is the fact that the job sustained me even when it wasn't supposed to. In those two years of lockdown, my yeah. salary would come in on time. This is someone that's never met me. He pays my salary, buys my car fuel, pays for my internet, pays for me to sneeze. The Lord, <laughs> the Lord has never not provided for me. That's true. So lockdown has been lifted, mm. but business is struggling. Mm. Yeah, Airbnb, it's struggling. Because COVID really affected uh -huh. business. And now we've been operational for almost three years. Mm. Cliff says to me, you know what, Michelle? I can't justify the money that's flooding into Africa. Yeah. I need to justify it in mm. America that, you know, where's the returns? Mm. We we're not breaking even yet. So he's saying, I have to pull out. I either leave the company to you or I give you a lovely sum and you start up your own thing. I said to him, that's fine. But even before the end of the job, it took him a while. He gave me another three months, transition. four months, the mm -hmm. transition. And then after that, he gave me a sum and said to me, first he asked me, what do you want to do? I told him, look, I'm into clothings. I want to do a clothing line. So he gave me capital. That was so gone. Really yeah. <laughs> I started, I did the first um, batch, mm -hmm. but also because I was facilitating home, mm. it, it disappeared in maintaining the home. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, I came to the end of the job. Okay. Now that job is done. The job is done. Mm -hmm. I last got a salary in December 2022. Mm, okay. So, but, so 2023, you're starting afresh. Full-time minister now. Okay. Not a dime, mm. not a coin. Mm. So, but when the job ended, like I told you earlier, I didn't feel bad. Mm. First of all, this man kept, he gave me a way forward, my former boss. And um, also, I felt like it was time for me to stop financing the mm. home. Like, I felt, you know what, God, I think it is time for the man. You, you felt like it was a push for him? Yeah. It was going to give because, him a push yeah. to step into his... Yeah. You know, his role. Yeah. Mm. So um, he started okay. to provide for the home. Mm. The Lord was gracious. Never once did we go without a meal. Mm. Everything was there. Okay. School fees, the kids' school fees paid. Nice. I wonder for Jesus. Like God provides. Mm. He's the ultimate source. Mm -hmm. So it made me think, oh, wow, this means he was, he could have. He could have, If yeah. his mind was there from mm -hmm. the get-go. Mm -hmm. But now he was left in a corner. And uh, this is the part that I, that I enjoyed the most. Remember, in the beginning of the marriage, I got a lot of accusations about... Mm -hmm. Being stingy. You're stingy. Where do you put all the money? Mm -hmm. That's a lot. You earn so much. Why don't you? Why don't you? So I handed the associate over to him. Mm -hmm. So well, there's a bit of drama in the house. Like, how is it we're spending 200,000 new GX on electricity? You guys are so wasteful. I just sat down and kept quiet. Remember, there's no discussion. And then he's saying this now that he's he's the yeah one now that pay. he's the one paying. Mm. He's seeing the waste mm. that's going on in the house, you know. But it wasn't an issue then when uh, you were paying. 
DSTV became the let. Like there was a lot of tying up mm. on, and to make sure that we don't. But it was what it was. Mm. You understand? Mm. You know, you know, we'll try putting 30K and I'm thinking this house spends 10K a day. Mm -hmm. Whether you put 30K for three days or 200,000 and chill for the whole month, it is what it is. So I thanked God that he was being given an opportunity to appreciate what I've been doing all this time. Yeah. You know? So that You've is how I You mentioned something that... Mm -hmm. um, you, when you stopped to work and he, he, he eventually started to chip in, mm -hmm. you mentioned that, oh, it was, you, you realized that maybe he, he could have in the beginning. Mm. Now, um, could it be that, would you advise ladies mm. To, mm. To, to, to fall back right mm. from the beginning mm -hmm. to not... Uh, does it it feels like he was enabled to it, does it, it to, to relax like ask women empower the men to to, to chill like no you mean, huh? um would as in would you mm -hmm. um advise a woman mm -hmm. to fall back a bit even mm. if he, she earns mm. more than the man to fall back a bit and let the man do the pain do do the paying because what you're saying is you now realize that oh he could have but maybe if his mind was in it yes mm. but maybe you didn't he didn't then because you didn't give him the that space. space because of course you knew that he was earning little so you felt like oh let mm. me just step in because mm. you know i have the money mm. Would i you get give you. him a chance i get to, your question yeah, yeah. nicole i wouldn't mm. You know, scripture says in Genesis, the Lord allocated us our roles. Yeah, that's right. He said to the woman, go and push the babies. Yeah. In so much pain. Mm. Everything that we had to do. He even said to us, your desire will be for the man. He gave us a few things to go through in life. Yeah. To the man, he said, you shall sweat mm -hmm. to get food. Mm. So I like the principles of the Bible. Mm -hmm. But if I am a woman, if I find myself in that situation again, from what I know now, I would still pay the bills. Mm. Why? I have learned that when I do good, the Lord good fights my battles. Yeah. It is the man to it is a man's duty to know mm. that he's supposed to hold fort in this house. Right. If he doesn't, that's his business with his God. Mm. I will step in anyway. Just going because to do right it's you. all of us that eat this food. Right. The school fees, the kids are ours. Mm. The, 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 the rent, we live in this house. Mm. So if he's not stepping up, because now, look, I swallowed a huge humble pill. And it, every time I swallowed it, even though it was too big for my neck, I saw the Lord mm. provide, mm. help, sustain. So I learned a lot earlier on that, okay, if a man can't do what he's supposed to do, mm. sow a seed. Mm. You're sowing a seed into your family. Yeah. And you speak to the Lord about it. And the Lord in all of his um, niceness, he will pay you back. Right. So that is what we call the grace. Again, people like to talk about the grace, but they don't actually know what the grace is. Mm. They say, oh, the grace of the Lord. The scripture says to us that grace is multiplied through the knowledge of God. You know, grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge of God. So it's the knowledge of either situation that's going on, but the ultimate grace is the knowledge of who Jesus Christ. Mm. Jesus is full of grace. The grace is actually the knowledge of Jesus and what Jesus would do in a situation. Yeah. Jesus said, if they slap you on the left cheek, you put the right cheek. So you do Jesus. Mm. And every time you do Jesus, you feel a certain peace. Mm. It is so peaceful. Not just that. He says that no matter how much you sow, mm. there's sowing time and there's reaping time. And he will. He will. So you are reaping all those... You will reap. Yes, you, yes. Yeah, I, was, I, I sold comfortably. And I would say to a lady Sorry, out there, sowing, just yeah. do, just do Jesus. Mm. He'll find a way to pay you back. Mm. He'll organize things in the end. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, is that all you wanted to share about work? Anything else before we go back to the place where we were? Work. Yeah, that was it. So I became a dependent. Mm. But even though I was a dependent, the Lord, the Lord was gracious. Mm. My husband took care of the home. He took care of me when he could. It was okay. okay. And by now, to be entirely honest with you, 
I was very, very gravitated toward the purpose because mm. I knew that the sooner I fulfill, oh, here's the other thing that you need to know. Mm. After I lost the second child or what could have been the child because it was a sack, my um, mom, she prayed a lot about it. She was crying out to the Lord. Mm. And the Lord said to her, do you want her to have kids that are fatherless? Mm. So she called me and said to me, Michelle, this is the message that I got. Hmm? I'm not supposed to pray for you anymore about children. But please also not. I, my eyes had opened up to the situation in the home. Mm -hmm. And this is not a place I wanted to bring babies. Mm. Because if there's no peace between the you parents, what, 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 what children are we raising? You yeah. understand? Yeah. The purpose of marriage is to have godly children, mm. to be fruitful. Well, the minute God created us, he said, okay, listen, I have blessed you, go out, be fruitful and multiply. Mm. We had fared, failed to bear fruit mm. as one. Mm. So multiplication, I was not keen on. Okay. Yeah. And now I thought to myself, okay, if God feels like we can't have children, guess what? I don't even have the energy myself. Mm. I'm happy to do God. But you see now, when 2022 begins, and I'm, um, no, 2023, mm. I'm exposed. I've gotten a revelation of the spirit behind my husband. Mm. I don't want anything other than God. Mm -hmm. You understand? And I'm thinking, okay, Father, now I know that this thing is not headed anywhere. Yeah. But help me. I began to have thoughts of, if I'm here for a training, there's not going to be any babies. You're not giving us any babies. There's, there's nothing happening here. Mm. Relationship-wise, kids-wise, anything-wise, teach me what I have to learn in the shortest time possible. Mm. Because now I've come to an understanding that we're not headed anywhere. We're not making progress. Mm. The biggest fear that I ever had was to overstay. Okay. Or to leave early. Mm. So I began to say prayers of, Father, let me know. Yeah. When my training is up. Yeah. Because now I had mastered the art of being silent. My partner was now explosive. Yeah. That's the nature of a narcissist. Because that's where you stopped. You were telling us that once this the spirit that was behind him was revealed to you, now the temper became hotter. Everything became worse. Mm. There was never peace. He was so quarrelsome. Oh, you don't talk to me. You don't talk to me. We need to go for counseling. I told him never. Unless you put me in a sack and tie me up. Mm. I'm not going back to another human being to sit for three hours. Because mm. I know how it all ends. So we were in the house and I just keep quiet. I do what I'm supposed to. I make sure I do good. So now we are in year 2023? 2023. Okay. okay. My heart was bent on I need to fulfill ministry. And that's, the, that's when my dad phoned me up. Okay. Yeah. The, the dad, dad that I, I got. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That time when I went crying. Mm. And he said to me, Michelle, I have a message for me, for you. I drove down that <laughs> bypass eh, mm. to Kazo real quick. I sat with him. He said to me, listen, Michelle, the Lord has shown me that your heart is like this. Mm -hmm. Like a golf ball tied up. Have you ever seen a golf ball? It has yeah. rubber bands on the inside. I grew up nice. in Entebbe and there's know. the people that play golf. We used to steal their balls and crack them so we can mm. get the rubber bands out. That's why it can bounce. It has mm. rubber bands on the inside. Yeah. So he said, your heart is like that. Like that. And the Lord doesn't blame you. He knows the pain you have been through. He mm. knows all the bruises. Yeah. He is not blaming you. But this is what the Lord says. Open up. Mm -hmm. Open up so that he can work. Wow. If you don't do good... The Lord can't help you. So all this time you're guarding your heart and now here is... Guard your heart well as on that scripture like a problem. <laughs> wow. <coughs> so he says, you need to open up so mm -hmm. the Lord can work. The Lord is ready to work. I sat in his office and cried. He hugged me so tight as is his nature. Wow. He is so loving, my dad. He's called um, Godfrey Mutabaganya. Mm. He said, Michelle, open up. I know it is hard. This is what the Lord is saying. <clears throat> Michelle, I know you have been bruised and abused, and I know that it hurts, but if you open up, the Lord will come in and work. Mm. And then he said, you just take the first step, and then the Lord will do the rest. I sat there. Now, I want to 
I'm sorry to cut yeah. you off. I just want to understand because I know how hard it can be mm -hmm. to open up your heart to someone who has not really been good to you. Mm -hmm. But remember when I asked you mm. what your feelings were towards him in the beginning and you said that you liked him? Mm -hmm. Because now after all this, mm. I want us to understand mm. how, what were your feelings towards this person? Golf ball. Your heart had, oh no, no. Okay, your heart had closed up, yes. W were you, because I don't want, did you hate this person? I could not hate him mm. because I'd gotten the understanding. Okay. I could go on and on on teachings about you narcissism. Just see him. Let me tell you something, Nicole. Mm. Do you know what makes you love your husband? Mm. There's something that you understood about him mm. that works for you. Let me tell you, love is so easy. We learn to love. Mm. Love is not butterflies in the stomach. Mm. You sit with a person, you converse, mm -hmm. you you learn something about them, you come into agreement with it. Okay. They say something. He says something. Or he does something that melts your heart. Then that drives you to love this person. Mm. And the amount of times you spend communicating and him doing good gives you a bigger percentage of why you love him. Probably seventy yeah. percent. When his faults come in. The love that you have is bigger than the faults. Right. So you carry on loving anyway. Mm. And with all of that, that's what butts a good relationship. That's what make, makes love, make, makes making love a lot easier. Mm. Everything easy. In fact, not even a lot easier. Enjoyable. Yeah. So for me, as in a space of, I've learned who my person is. Mm -hmm. And um, my answers are in here. Mm. Number one, I don't hate him. Because if I hate him, I hate God. Right. Remember instruction. Yeah. God sent me into it to learn. Mm. So if I hate him, I'm hating the instruction. Mm. So I'd, I I'd learned to look at him in a manner of, oh, wow. Because again, one time the Lord came to me and said to me, do you know how many women are out there in those beautiful homes and fences and the fancy cars and sunglasses and they're dealing with this sort of thing? So I learned to look at him in the angle of, oh, wow, how many of you are out there? How many, sto <laughs> how many women are stomaching, the stomaching this? Yeah. Father, I thank you. You know, I learned to say thank you prayers as opposed to complaints. Mm. So, Father, I thank you. So, every time you're in a praise mode or a thanking mode, your heart relaxes. Right. So, I learned to be around this person. First of all, I learned them. I learned their triggers. I learned to smell that spirit when it's, it's on its way. So, you, you knew your person. I knew my person so well. Yeah. So, it didn't allow me to go you into know a something, mode. You know how to yeah, protect it, yourself. It you know from how here. to deal with it. When you can reconcile it in your head, you're good. Okay. And the beauty of this is it, the, your emotions stop to be determined by the other person's action. Right. That's emotional intelligence. Mm. So I got all of that and I sat down in my movie. Nice. Yeah. So let's go back to the uh, that Where told you to open up. He has yeah. given you a hug. You're crying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Michelle, if you don't open up, you're stuck in this forever. Mm. So and you don't the, want to be stuck uh, in it. <laughs> the Lord needs to work. Yeah. So open up. Mm. I remember dri driving down that bypass and I, I kept encouraging. You know when the, when the Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the mm -hmm. Lord, driving and thinking, Lord, I, I, I can do this. I can do this. I even sent him a message with, hello, darling, words such as those. Yeah. <laughs> And then I got home. I was overly active in everything that I have to do. I even prayed for the grace to be more receptive in bed. Absolutely. Even though before it was a chore, praise mm. King Jesus. Mm. So within two days, or is it one day, mm -hmm. we yielded results. You did? Yeah, because my husband had um, gotten phone numbers of everyone that's close to me. That's a story for the next episode. Mm. So he phoned my mom, mm. jubilating. Oh my God, God has worked. God has answered my prayer, which <laughs> means even him, he was praying, yeah. Father, this marriage, this marriage yeah. is too hard for us. Can you imagine that movie? <laughs> I am praying. He's, He's praying. praying yeah. yeah. So he called and said, God has answered my prayer. Michelle is nice to me. Like she is super nice to me. Wow. You understand? Mm. So my mom told my dad, my dad called me and told me, Michelle, do not drop the ball. Mm. Keep on keeping on so the Lord can work. You have, you know, I have, I have questions. So, yeah. um, you've mentioned that when I asked you about your feelings towards this person, mm -hmm. and now you actually shared how you texted him, hi, darling. Mm. I'm curious to know mm. how, like, how was your communication? You know, mm. my husband and I. I know. <laughs> hi, honey, I am going to pee. Honey, I just sneezed. No, honey, can you believe there's seven mosquitoes in this room? I do not go off 
do not end a phone call without saying I love you. Yeah, and, and I, I love you too. You know, and I so, always tease you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, is that something you people used to say? Like, was there a moment where he texts you this and you actually have to reply, or would you Let not reply? Tell you, I got bruised in the first year. And come, would you call yourself these no, nice Nicole. things? No, Nicole. No. Hmm. It became when the phone call comes, you start to, first of all, you organize yourself mm. because you don't know what's coming. Mm. There's somebody that came to David and David asked him, do you come to me in peace? Mm -hmm. So me, when I would see his name, I would organize my mind and heart, like what's coming? If it is nice, I don't even want to open up because I don't know what comes afterwards. Mm. I, I was in protection mode, but it was rare mm. that good words would come. And even if you wanted to, I had understood mm. that it's just temporary. Okay. You understand? All right. Because there was so much abuse, I, I'll tell you the rest in the next episode. Okay. So um, we are, you're, you're, you're on your way home. You're, yeah. you're still telling us you sent a message. Went home and did good. Oh, yeah. And you were, he called and, and he was so happy he, that you He testified that, every, that everything is fine. Mm, okay. So I got back into that space of, oh my God, Michelle, mm. you need to do good. Mm. In good time, you shall reap. Okay. So I started doing good again. All right. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. This is where we are now. Michelle, Michelle's then husband, thinks that everything is now good. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is where we shall start from in the next part as yeah. Michelle tells us about mm -hmm. what happened next. Yeah. Was, were, were things really good? Were they really in a good space or... Was that just in the guy's mind, in the guy's head? But before we conclude, yeah, I'd love for you to tell us more about uh, this Crest place. Homes, Crest my favorite space ever. This is mm. Crest Homes in Kitende. Mm -hmm. These are very, very beautiful two-bedroom apartments. We have the master bedroom that's, you know, has everything. Mm. Bathroom, air conditioning, lovely. I enjoyed the mosquito nets. You know, I don't like mosquito nets that are intrusive. Mm -hmm. Like the ones that make, make you feel like you're in a, you're in a jail. Eh? These ones are those nice rail ones. It has, mm. it's like a princess bed and you sit in there and then you do your Jesus and a lot of, ooh, or whatever you do. It's nice. Uh, lovely beddings. Um, the other bedroom has um, two beds, yeah. twin beds. Mm -hmm. So, it's, so it's, a, it's, it's a good one for family. Mm -hmm. And I like that each room has its own bathrooms. Mm. Um, the kitchen is very well equip equipped. Everything that you need. Cutlery, microwave, fridge, glasses, plates, wine glasses, everything. It has nice security. It is um, free Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. cable TV, housekeeping is beautiful. It's your place to be and it's only $40 a night. Wow. So please check yes. it out. Crest mm -hmm. Homes in Kitende. Okay, it's, um, it's in Kitende. A few minutes drive from the main road. Five minutes perhaps. 20 minutes drive, uh, drive from the airport. 30 minutes drive into mm. Kampala CBD without traffic on okay. the bypass. So mm. it's a nice one to check out when you're in Uganda mm. or even if you're in the country and you feel to be away from your home. Mm. Just some peace and quiet. Lovely place. All right, Ni Michelle. Mm. I, was saying, I was going to say, all right, Nicole. <laughs> yeah. All right, Michelle, thank you so much for sharing. We bless the Lord. We are going to be back with the mm. next part because we are not done yet. We are still going. Amen. But otherwise, stay tuned and God bless you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching.